Hi, hello. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the High Share Show on the High Share Network. Today, we are talking about violence awareness, and we are talking about suicide and suicide prevention. Yes. Uh, we talked before, like every Tuesday, we talk about violence awareness. Uh, we discuss different topics and different, um, you know, ways of people can be violent to other and how people can get violated by words is what we're going to talk about today. Uh, words do hurt. Uh, last week and the week before, we did talk about what so many people believe in, uh, you know, hurting someone or yeah. uh, or being violent towards someone. It has to be uh, by hitting them or by physically abusing them. People don't think about what the words that they use. They don't think about bullying as a way of someone to actually end their lives. Right. And, you know, I uh, would like all of you to join us. This is a very sensitive topic. Uh, not just to me, but I'm sure to many people out there. Mm -hmm. So if you have an experience or you have someone that you love that lost their life because of violence, whether that being words or actual physical violence, uh, and if you don't mind to share your story with us so we can continue raising awareness. As long as there are people that die and as long as we lose people every day, we are going to keep talking yeah. about death by words. Death by words is something that people don't think of as a real thing. Um, let's just start about talking about bullying. There is a huge difference between bullying and fighting. Fighting is, you know, something that happened between two people that have this to hurt each other or to even, you know, get, get into, uh, into a discussion with right. each other. Right. But bullying is someone who is made to feel as they're not good enough. Yeah. They're not, you know, um, someone that should be alive. Uh, is someone that make you feel bad about how you look, make you feel bad about how you think. And most importantly today, is bullying people with special needs. Yeah. Um, we have over, what, 50,000 yeah. people commit 50, suicides yep. in the US. 000, yep. Yeah. 50,000 so, Americans died by suicide in 2023. Yeah. 50,000, I want you guys to really think about that number. Yeah. Because most of the time, you know, when we hear about suicide, we, we, we don't think about the mass number, right? Mm -hmm. And just like we talked about, what, two weeks ago mm -hmm. when we did the reading and the, the young girl was saying that words didn't hurt. She was adamant. Yeah. She was very adamant. She was upset at the fact that Hajir was telling her that words do hurt. Yeah. You know? Yeah. They don't hurt you physically, but they hurt you. And, um, like, that situation and seeing this number, like, was like, wow. Yeah. And it does start. Don't it, it starts from having a child that grew up seeing violence and and seeing you using bad words yeah. there is an illustration or a picture of a mother or a father it depends on where you look um having those words injected to a young child's yeah. brain yeah and then the child is doing something to hurt their friends in right, school. Right. So it is start at an early start at an early age by you teaching your kids that words don't hurt. Yeah. Or making them feel not worthy. In return they either hurt someone or hurt themselves. Yeah. Um, we have in the children and the young adult how, how many? 14% I think. Yeah, we actually went up from, there was a 3% increase from 2022 to 2023 mm -hmm. of death amongst um, young adults. That was from yeah. age 14, I believe, to 23 or 24. Yeah. That's a lot. Yeah. And you know, part of it is parent not thinking that a young person could have depression. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thinking that a young person problem is not important. Yeah. Like when your son or daughter come to you and say 
someone is treating me bad or even just life in general is hard for me to live. Mm -hmm. You have to take this serious. If a child talk about ending their lives or their life doesn't matter yeah. or talking about somebody that is thinking this way, mm -hmm. you have to get them help. And I know we talked about that in the mental health, that the wait list is very long. Yeah, it is very long. Months. Very. Six, six months to a more, year. Yeah, more. Yeah. yeah. My, my, one of my friends had a, uh, her daughter was in crisis. And she reached out and had to call 911 and all of that. And they told her she is not as immediate risk. Mm -hmm. So she has to wait. Wow. Even the use we used to when I was working at the hospital, we used to admit um, young young adult or even adult admit them for three days under observation. They don't do that anymore. Like when you go there, they assess you, yeah, give you medication, send you home. Right. I am not against medication by any mean, but medication is not the answer. Yeah. If someone comes to you and say they're depressed or they're going through something, you don't just give them chemical. Yeah. You don't just sedate them or you, you, you basically put a band-aid without cleaning right. that wound. You have to find out why, what is going on in their head, you know? And a lot of people have um, this misinformation yeah. that if you talk to someone who is thinking about suicide, you're putting idea in their head. Right. That's not true. You can sit with someone and talk to them and say, are you thinking about hurting yourself? Yeah. Are you thinking about killing yourself? Mm -hmm. Do you have an active plan? You know, if you don't have a way to get them to a therapist, psychiatrist, or get them help, be that psychiatrist and ask them. Ask those hard questions, and I know as a mother, it is not easy for yeah. me, you know? Um, my daughter was saying that for a while, and we have to talk to her. We got her into therapy, and I went back to being the Sudanese mother, you know, just to think about what is in your life that is making you depressed? Come on, yeah. grow up, like, yeah. you know? And, and a lot of people are like, why are you complaining? Right. You, th you think about that, and I'm not yeah. going to lie. I sat there and thought what is happening in your life to make you think that you can be better off yeah. when i think from my personal view that you have everything and i know a lot of parents think this way yeah. and it's okay it's not okay to keep thinking this way it's okay to check yourself so you have to check yourself you have to try to acknowledge their struggles whether that to you is nothing, right? you know? Um, also, check on your kids. When they come back from school, talk to them. Is someone treating you bad? I mean, both of my girls are not young. They're, they're grown, <laughs> like now. But I still ask them, and Ramaz is like, Mom, I'm in high school. Nobody bully me anymore. What are you talking about? Nobody does that. Nobody yeah. bullied me before. I said, yeah. I just got to check. I still do that every day. You know, if somebody talked to you in a certain way, somebody made you feel like you're not worthy, and social media. Last week we talked about yeah. social media, the images, the expectation yeah. of young kids to, to look a certain way, yeah. dress to a certain dress way. a certain yeah. way, to talk a certain way. So, yeah. yeah. And, and that's so, like, relatable. You know, my, my son is nine years old, and... Uh, the, he got some new red shoes. Yeah. He got some Nike 270s, and I was trying to hype him up because he loves red. Mm -hmm. And he refused to wear his shoes to school mm. today and yesterday. And I asked him, I said, why don't you want to, you were so excited about these shoes. Yeah. He was like, well, one of the kids said that they were gay. Oh, my gosh. So he was like, I don't want to, I don't want to be gay, so I'm not going to wear them no more. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's those types of things. So. Ask your kids, talk to your kids, like Azir said, and then make sure you're educating your children at the same time. Yeah. Because unfortunately, we cannot control what other, you know, families do with their children at home. All we can oh, do is yes, we can. That's why we're doing this. Well, I mean, <laughs> I mean, we can't we control, can bring awareness, but, but we try. We yeah. can try our best, right? Yeah. But when it comes to sending your child to school, you have to make sure you're arming them with the ability yeah. of discernment. You know, you're having conversations with him and, and explain. I had to literally explain to Asher yesterday. 
Don't let anyone. Don't let anybody make, make you feel, feel this way. If you want to wear red shoes, you wear red shoes. You want to wear pink shoes, you wear pink shoes. LeBron wears pink shoes. And you tell know? me, um, you know, uh, like why a child would know this if they didn't hear it from an adult. Yeah. So you guys check check yourself. Every yeah. parent listening to us right now, what you say in the closed doors. It is not in the closed doors. Right. It and is when not you think, Vegas. When you think <laughs> it's not what happened in Vegas to stay in Vegas. What happened in your home right. actually translates to how your kids act exactly. in the society and at school. Yeah. And if your son or daughter felt it's okay for them to call someone names yeah. or call Asher uh, red shoes yeah. as being gay, yeah. not uh, being gay is a problem, you know, but why would you even Use think that this term, way? Right, exactly. And and I think if people know that your what you do with your life is your own choice. Yeah. I don't sleep with you in your room or mm -hmm. your house, so I don't care who you sleep with. Yeah. And you shouldn't either. Yeah. You shouldn't care about who dress yeah. how, who does what in their own time as long yeah. as they're not hurting you or hurting someone else. Right. Staying in your lane. Stay in your lane. And and you be here was saying um self love, right? You you were sharing with us self love. Like kids need to learn to love themselves. Yeah. And we share that all the time. If you don't love yourself, you cannot expect others to love you. Right. And as a parent you have to show them that, right? Because they don't know. Like everything every behavior is a learned behavior mm -hmm. so you have to show them the importance of loving yourself and that starts with you as mom and dad yeah and that's really hard you know i suffered from um severe anxiety and severe depression for all of my teenage years where i wasn't able to walk for two and a half years mm -hmm. okay two and a half years of not being able to walk mm -hmm. because of depression yeah so when I tell you that depression could affect your body and affect you in ways that you wouldn't even imagine, words hurt. Yeah. And my words weren't even, the, the words that made me depressed weren't even to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? But it affected me to the point to where I literally had to crawl to the bathroom. Yeah. Did you think about ending it all? I no. Know. No. I just... I wasn't I wasn't eating, so I was seventy five pounds at the age of seventeen. Mm -hmm. I wasn't eating, and I just laid in bed all day. Yeah. And when I would go to church or you know services, will we call it? I felt like people were making fun of me. Like people were asking, like, what happened to you? So you know, nobody wanted to be around me um, because I couldn't walk. Yeah. And then if it wasn't for my sisters, like, they had to carry me one day, like, arm and arm, like, out of the sanctuary. And yeah. They were like, Maya needs help. Yeah. And, you know, it, it took a lot. It takes a lot for somebody to get out of that state. Mm -hmm. And even right now, as a grown woman that I am, I still have a severe anxiety. Yeah. Or depression. Like, I'll just sit in my car and cry. And I don't even know why I'm crying, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Like, just break down for yeah. no reason. Yeah. And everybody's looking like, what's wrong with you? And I and, and it, I have to start doing better because I would just do it in front of my son. Yeah. Like, I would just be at the stoplight and I would just be like, <laughs> you know? And then that, that's trauma for mm -hmm. a child to mm -hmm. see your parent cry. Yeah. But also... It shows them that it's normal to yeah. cry. And it's yeah. it's a way of coping. Yeah. So it's a coping mechanism. So don't feel bad about crying or if that is going to help you to feel better, it's okay. But you have to address the issue. Yeah, and that's what Malaz, mm. shout out to Malaz. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, we had a great discussion um, at the end of last year yeah. about trauma and how... If you don't process your trauma, you're always just going to sweep it under the rug. And I have a lot of trauma. Yeah. You know? I'm not ashamed to say I've, been through, I've been through some stuff, y'all. Yeah. Um, and I sweep it under the rug, unfortunately. Yeah. 
and uh, these past your trauma traumatized me. And that tells you something, <laughs> honestly. Like with and the, her trauma on... traumatized me. Ain't that crazy? <laughs> yeah. My yeah. trauma ain't nothing like her years trauma, y'all. Okay? Oh, my trauma is nothing like yours. But um, that's but... and that's 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 part of you know everybody look at their life differently, yeah. and you might look at yourself and see you know this is the worst thing yeah. that could happen to anyone and it might be yeah. you know but trust me someone somewhere is going through something that you don't know about exactly someone is fighting a battle that you don't know about yeah. and that's why words do hurt yeah, and, and do. shout out to Cody Lee uh, his new single it's not new but change you know he is autistic so he basically fits and I love Cody yeah. dearly. He is an amazing human being and, and he's not ashamed. He's a fighter and he's been through a lot. Yeah. He's been through bullying. He's been through a life that, you know, he had to navigate being blind, being autistic yeah. and being, you know, go, uh, having a lot of other, other issues. But again, he used that yeah. to show people that it's not easier said than done, right. but it can be done. Yeah. Um, his song change he say you know words cut deep yeah. and and truly words do cut deep they because do. you don't know what anyone out there um, you know been through yeah and sometimes we think words are so easy and simple and you know what I'm just kidding a lot of people use the JK joking yeah. to make it better or they put, no it doesn't oh I put lol at the end yes so yes. it doesn't it, I, it was just kidding yes yeah 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 that's yeah. a joke no no yeah. and you know what in Sudan there is something that I always talk about with that we give names mm -hmm. we give names to people and think it's cute nicknames yeah. you know calling someone who's darker than you calling them Azrag well, uh, uh, you know, giving them name and, and someone with like, um, you know, have um, cross eyed. Yeah. They call them name. Someone with teeth, buck teeth. And they do it here too. But they use this and it become a nickname. Yeah. And thinking, oh, he's okay. He's accepting it. He's laughing yeah. Yeah. when we tell him that. No, he is internal internalizing it. Yeah. He is taking it all in. And it's becoming layer after layer after layer until it breaks them. Yeah. And people break in different different ways. Yeah. And Some people just stop. And when you're younger and you're fed these types of things, yeah. as you get older, they like latch on to you like a leech. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So you will constantly doubt yourself. Yeah. And you will constantly think of what this person told you over and over again. Like yeah. when I was a kid. Yeah. Very sad. Mm-hmm. But my sisters used to make fun of me. They used to say, oh, Maya looks like Whoopi Goldberg. Mm. And I thought, when I was little, I didn't think that Whoopi Goldberg looked, that, you know, like, I didn't, I was young. I was yeah. like seven or eight. And see, that, that's bad to you and Whoopi. Exactly. Like, but I, I didn't, like, as a kid, I didn't know. They were like, oh, you look like Whoopi Goldberg. Or I had, like, huge lips as a kid. Yeah. So they would take, like, the butterfly clips and then clip them. Wow. So, <laughs> so those things like, as, but as I get older, like I'll catch myself like, I don't know, criticizing yourself. Yeah, and that's why you're always like Maya, like why you look fine, and I'm like, mm. no, you know, because those things when you're a child and you hold on to them, yeah, it's hard to let go. Yeah, it's yeah. very hard to let go, and I can't. I'm still trying to let go. Yeah, but you have to process the trauma. And that's what I learned from Malaz that day. She said it's so simple. And it's hard to it's hard to process it because you don't know how. So to prevent it, right? We have to start talking to our children and making sure that we're feeding them that love. Hi, Hindi. We're feeding them love. So when people say bad things to them, they don't they know it's not true. They don't internalize yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I was raised by a single father. So, you know, my dad could only do so much. He worked a lot. He wasn't home, you know. So it was like we fend for ourselves, essentially. Yeah. You know, but now that I'm older, I want to I protect my son. Yeah. I don't want him to hear anything that, you know, 
in the remotely will make him feel like he is not worthy or he is not enough or he is this and he is that. But you know what? This is not the right way to go about it. I'm sorry. It could be your, your defense mechanism, but um, you are basically trying to put him in a bubble where yeah. the world is unkind. Yeah. You want to talk to him. You don't want to just prevent them from hearing anything bad, but you want to talk to him and say, people might say things about you. Yeah. Don't let that destroy you. Don't let that make you feel any kind of way. Yeah. You know, emphasize on the good things that he does or she yeah. does and talk about what, you know, how he can combat that. Yeah. Like if someone bully you, what should be your response? Yeah. I don't know if any one of you out there experience it. Share with us your, your experience. Share with us what you use um, to stop the bullying. Or if you saw someone getting bullied, it's, it's our job, you know, to stand and, and help. And especially when we talk about children. Yeah. We have 50, let that sit right here. And that's just in the U.S. Yeah. We're not talking about the world. We're not talking about in Sudan or, yeah. or in areas that a lot of people, you know, taking your life is a stigma. Yeah. People don't do it, you know, yeah. uh, whether that because of religion or whether mm -hmm. that because of the, the society. But it's still, we have people commit suicide. Yeah. And we have a lot of people that died. Um, a couple years ago, we had to do um, like an intervention at some elementary school. I'm not talking about middle school. I'm talking about kids from five, six years old, all the way to like 12, right? Kids, uh, we have, uh, I was a nine years old, took her own life. A nine years old, took her life. She's being bullied at the school. Wow. Uh, she's being bullied a lot. Her parents didn't know. Yeah. The teacher didn't do anything about it. Mm. And I'm not blaming the teachers because if you have a class of 25, 30 people and it's you're hard. overworked and yeah. they're paid, you just do the bare minimum. Yeah. So our system need to do better also. Yeah. yeah. But a child, an eight or a nine years old, you might sit here and say, what happened to them to make them decide to take their own life? People happened to them, words. Yeah. happened to them yeah. bullying someone you wake up and you go to school every day or you're out and now with social media people don't even leave you when you leave school yeah before you get bullied in school you get bullied on the way to school yeah. back from school yeah. and it ends when you come home yeah. now people reach you even at home yeah. they text you they send you uh, images they take picture they do stuff so right. it's a 24 hour battle yeah. and it might be for you, it might be just simple or stupid, yeah. but for them, this is their world. This is all they know. Right. So it is a big deal. Right. And that's why we started that topic, yeah. social media and relationships, right? Yeah. Because like I said in that, in that show on, on Friday, we have lost the sense of consequences of talking on the yeah. internet. Mm -hmm. We there are no consequences. It's it's freedom of speech. You can say oh, whatever yeah. you want, whenever you want, yeah. however you want, and nobody hold you accountable for it. Yeah, this has to stop. I'm sorry, because words cut so deep to the point that our small children. Yeah, I can't imagine my son nine years old thinking about taking his own life. Yeah, I can't. I can't imagine that. Yeah. That traumatized me. Just you saying a nine-year-old traumatized me to where I'm thinking, yeah. I, do I need to have a conversation with Asher when I get home? You, you know do. what I'm saying? You do. Like, you honestly do. You do. I wouldn't even know what to say. I know. It's not easy. Because be a lot of people think when you say that, you're putting the idea in their head. But talk to them. You don't have to come and talk about it. Have you thought about harming yourself? Mm -hmm. Have you? You don't have to start by that. You can start by simply asking them is someone treating you badly in school yeah. is someone telling you to hurt yourself yeah. because one of the students was telling that young lady you we will be better off if you're dead go kill yourself go kill yourself and then they sent her messages on how she can kill herself you can hang yourself you can get a knife and cut here i mean and this is coming from a child to yeah. a child.
That is like really, to me, it was insane. This child either have some mental issues that his parent need to address yeah. or the parent are saying stuff like that. Yeah. And that person hear it, see it and doing it. Yeah. So, you know, um, we just need to be vigilant. We yeah. need to pay attention to how people are talking to others, yeah. how we're talking to our kids yeah. and how our kids are receiving that. Right. Even so even how we are talking yeah. to our spouses or our boyfriends or our girlfriends or whoever while we're in the middle. Yeah. Why your children, just because your children are in their room doesn't mean they can't hear what you guys are saying, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, they do hear it. So your yeah. conversations that you're having with friends and families and your spouses and this and the third, that needs to be observed too. Be careful what you say. Mm -hmm. Because what your husband may say to you, you say to your husband, your son's going to think it's okay for him to go tell somebody at school. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Saying it, starting a rumor. Yeah. You know, you sit there and yabbering shamarat fi Sudan or, you know, you sit there and talk about other people and calling Debbie, you know, Debbie is like this and that and, yeah. you know, just talk bad about people. This is this negative energy, you know, cross from right. you. You always sit there putting people down yeah. and trying to uh, spread rumors, yeah. spreading negative things or or calling people by name. You know, there yeah. is racist remarks. Yeah. Yeah. People call people N words. People call yeah. people a lot of bad words and yeah. not just here in the U.S. You are talking all over mm -hmm. or homophobic, you know, um, it's it's not it's it, it's just not it's not OK. I I don't know what else to say. Um, other than you got to do better. Like we all have to do better. Yeah. And we all have to make sure that we are educating ourselves on suicide, suicide prevention. If you have a friend or family member in there, you're seeing any type of signs, yeah. please call the suicide hotline. Please call a friend, call me, message me. I don't, I don't care what time of day or night if you are going through a situation reach out to somebody and don't be afraid yeah. and if you are listening and somebody reaches out to you and they and they say listen i'm going through this take them seriously it's okay? a call for help it's a call for help yeah it's a call for help um we had someone on facebook uh, before was writing and i don't know that person personally so it doesn't have to you know that person if that come up on your feed Someone is saying, I'm tired of it all. I'm going to end yeah, it. Yeah. Take it serious. Reach out. Yeah. I did. I, I have reached out to so many people before that I don't know them. Just sometime one word or of an act of a kindness yeah. could make someone rethink. Because when someone come out and say, I'm thinking about this, that's called call for help. Yeah. They're calling for help. Yeah. So you could be that person to help them and save their life. Yeah. And just look at the statistic. Look at everything around you. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. And this conversation, we don't want this conversation to end with this live. Please share the live video. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Make sure you're following on TikTok and Instagram. We need this message to go out. And yes, we will talk about violence prevention every single Tuesday. Yeah. Because it's important. Violence has not stopped. Violence has been happening since the beginning of time. And we're still asking for help. We're yeah. still bringing forth awareness. Mm -hmm. So don't let it stop after this live, please. Have the conversation with your children. Have the conversation with your family. and Children, make friends. <laughs> exactly. If they're at your house. Not even if they're at your house. If you see them and you yeah. hear them saying some things, yeah. talk to those yes. parents. Yeah. Because those parents sometimes are not... Right. You know, they're they're not right. Right. You know? Right. And they might not accept it. And they might say, I'm done with you. Right. Then be it. Right. Yeah. Right. Or just put it casually if you don't want to have that confrontation or that, right. you know, discussion. Just send them resources. Show them that people will die from your, your ignorance or yeah. your words. Yeah. So, and the hotline number is 988. That is the suicide prevention hotline number. Yeah. If you need help and you don't have nobody else to talk to. And you're in the U.S. And you are in the U.S., please reach out to the hotline. That's 988. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyways, um, this is it for today. 
Thank you for being here. Thank you for joining us. And I know you could be doing anything with your time, but you chose to be here and we don't take this lightly. So be the change that you want to see in the world and we will see you tomorrow. Bye guys. Thanks for watching.